welcome to the fourth episode of the Ultimate Health Podcast, where we meet you where you're at on your health journey and take it to the next level. My name is Jesse Chappis, and I'm here with my co-host, Marnie Wasserman. Hi, everyone. I'm really excited about our show today. We have Josh Catalis, who is our friend and a clinical nutritionist. He has so much amazing information to share. I'm really excited about this interview. We start off talking about calcium and bone building, which as a chiropractor is such an important topic. I have a lot of patients that are taking calcium supplements, and there is so much controversy in the health world. Are these supplements good for you? bad which type of calcium to take and Josh breaks it down in a very clear manner and I just got a lot from it. We also talk about detoxification and Josh talks about some healthy and safe approaches and the reasons why we need to detoxify in the toxic world that we live in. So I really love some of his suggestions and protocols for how one can go about a detox. And we also break down the difference between detoxification and cleansing, which was really interesting. So yeah, that was great. And we also talk about gut health, how to build and maintain gut health and why that is so important. So that's a really important topic for people to understand and wrap their head around. And Josh broke it down very well. So Josh Gitalis, he's a clinical nutritionist, and he's currently pursuing a certification in functional medicine. Uh, His major focus is on evidence-based nutrition, and you guys are going to really enjoy this interview. So without further ado, here is Josh Gitalis. Hello, and I want to welcome Josh Gitalis to the Ultimate Health Podcast. Josh, how are you doing over there? I'm doing fantastic. Are you excited to talk health with us? Always, Jesse, always. We're excited to have you on the show. So I know we have a whole bunch of questions lined up. And we really want to just uh, peak your expertise on some very specific subjects. So we're going to get right into it. Jess, want to go ahead? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, Josh, I think a good idea would be to give the audience a bit of an idea of your health journey and how you got to where you are today. All right. So um, just, I guess, a quick summary. I've always been interested in the body. I've always been interested in health. Loved biology in uh, high school. And... I went on to university and studied kinesiology, Um, and when I was done that, I really didn't want to go into any of the fields that you're sort of meant to go into from kinesiology. I I wasn't interested in occupational therapy or medicine or uh, physiotherapy. I kind of had this broad range of interests, and I knew nothing really encapsulated it all. But I knew something was out there that did. So I took a year off. I I did a little uh, ski bumming in Banff, Alberta, Canada, which was really fun. Um, And realized after about a year I needed some mental stimulation. So I came back home, just started to look into everything. And did a little personal training. And I eventually saw a speaker by the name of Paul Check at at a conference. And he just blew my mind. He talked about holistic nutrition and uh, it, it was stuff I never heard before. Subsequently, I heard about the Institute of Holistic Nutrition in Toronto and signed up. And I, I haven't looked back. I've, you know, um, that was sort of the foundation of my studies. And afterwards, that's where the true learning began with working with clients and doing continued education, etc. And I mean, for my personal health journey, just learning this information and applying it to myself. Um, I've just, you know, come so far from where I was. Uh, many of my students know that I love to try things on myself. So I've, I have some, some pretty interesting stories. Maybe some we'll, dis- we'll talk about today um, on successes and some failures. But whatever I recommend for my clients, I always like to try. I like that perspective. And I'm very similar in that way where I like to test different, some would say extreme health protocols on myself and yeah, a lot of times, like you said, they can go a little awry, but oftentimes the, the results are fantastic. Absolutely. What would you say was one of the most extreme things that you've put yourself through? Well, I have taken enough supplements to make myself vomit, so that, that was a fun time. <laughs> um, that was actually with, with some strong antimicrobials with berberine in them. I was just kind of testing those out. More recently, I uh, tried a protocol where you um, – you take um, niacin, niacin is vitamin B3, 
And what it does is it causes a huge release of histamine and causes major vasodilation. It feels like you're having like a, an intense hot flash, which is perfectly safe and really therapeutic, actually. Uh, I've heard of a protocol from, from Dr. Yu a while back on doing this and then going into an infrared sauna. That's quite an experience as well. It just, uh, you really feel like you're, you're, you're just oozing out toxins. Sounds good. Um, a question. Having gone to the same school as you, the Institute of Institute of Holistic Nutrition, I went the nutrition route, you went the supplement route, more or less. What really started to kind of pique your interest in terms of supplementation and clinical nutrition? What really sparked that for you? Yeah, so I wouldn't say like I, I, I go the supplement route, but I'm, I guess, more clinical, whereas you're more of the culinary type type stuff. But um, I just, I, I wanted to work with people and I wanted to help people with serious health conditions get better through natural means because our medical system is amazing at emergency care, at stabilization, and at doing, you know, crazy operations and things like that. So they're really good at the acute care, but when it comes to dealing with people with chronic disease and degenerative diseases, it falls short in, in a big way. And I knew that there was a huge gap in this, and I wanted to work with that population. So just going and seeking out the information on how to help these people led me to, you know, become an expert in supplementation and using foods as medicine and therapeutically, um, obviously making sure someone has a good foundational diet for their constitution and also important uh, choosing lifestyle uh, while well, making lifestyle choices that support that holistic lifestyle that eventually supports health and can actually reverse disease. All right. That makes a lot of sense. And keeping on the supplements a bit longer, um, I know it can be really confusing for people. There are so many different supplements, so many different companies, qualities. Um, where do people start with all of this? Is there certain supplements that most people need to look into? And how can they go about making sure they're the best quality? That's a great question. I'm so happy you brought that up. Because Sometimes I get the comment, oh, supplements don't really work for me. Or, you know, shouldn't food be able to, you know, take care of everything for you in terms of nutrients? And when people are saying those types of comments, they're saying it from a place of ignorance. They don't actually know the potential of supplements. And really what supplements are are just concentrated forms of food to um, – bring super physiological levels of nutrients into the body to promote the healing process. And really at a biochemical level, level to speed um, enzyme activity. So, yeah, you walk into a health food store and it's like, it's like crazy. It's, um, you don't know what's going on there. I remember the first time I walked into one, I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Like, this is the most confusing place I've ever been. Like, how do you choose this stuff? And, the, the great thing about supplements is that, you you know, they're off the shelf. You can just pull them off and try them yourself. But that's also somewhat of, the, somewhat of a bad thing for supplements because people think they can just, you know, try different things. And, you know, I wouldn't walk into a drugstore and, you know, try to give myself a prescription drug. I would go to a professional to do that. So I actually recommend the same thing with supplements because they have to actually be prescribed and used um, in an orthomolecular way. That, and that word means using the right nutrient in the right dosage. And I would add to that for the right person at the right time. So when we actually use these therapeutic nutrients in the right dosage and in the right form for a specific condition um, and take them properly, they have tremendous therapeutic possibilities. And, you know, when used correctly, uh, we see some really great results. So I would say that people need to either educate themselves properly or find a practitioner that knows how to use them properly and to set them on the right foot. And it's also true that if people are taking subpar quality supplements, such as, say, GNC supplements or something they find at the uh, local mall, they could actually be doing damage to their health. Absolutely. And it's, it's like food. You can get, these are concentrated forms of food. So you can get very low quality food. I can go to, you know, Walmart and get some iceberg lettuce, or I can go to, 
a beautiful farmer's market and grab some dark green kale. They're both green leafy vegetables, but they're going to offer a completely different nutrient density and nutrient profile. So it's the same with supplements. And, you know, with supplements, they're definitely not all created equal. Um, there's many things to consider, like the form of the supplement and what might be in it, like fillers and, you know, different things that they add to it. Perfect example is calcium. Um, there's different forms of calcium that have different absorbability in the body. So possibly the worst form of calcium is called calcium carbonate. And that's the form that we find in Tums and Rolaids and really cheap calcium supplements. And that's basically chalk. You know, you can write on the board with calcium carbonate. And then there's there's way more absorbable forms. So Calcium citrate is even more absorbable than calcium carbonate. And then sort of the best form of, of calcium, if you're going to take it, is ground up bone. And it's known as microcrystalline hydroxyapatite complex. And that's a long name, but really it just means ground up bone. And when you get that, you're, it's like you're eating a food. You know, you get the calcium, you get the phosphorus, and you get some trace minerals as well. Wow, Josh, I'm so glad you brought that up and clarified the calcium uh, story because As a chiropractor, a lot of my patients are coming to me with low bone density and their doctors have them on regular calcium or some some pharmaceutical drugs to up their bone density. And it's just good to know the differences. And I think that's really important with everybody. So many people being on calcium supplements these days to clarify that. And uh, thank you. Oh, yeah, no problem. And yeah, I mean, bone health, just to expand on that, since you gave me the opportunity to do so, <laughs> um, is is not just calcium. I mean, calcium is, it, it's almost like you're going to build a shed in your backyard and you look outside and there's a, a big pile of two by four sitting there. And you're like, I don't get it. You know, I've got all the two by fours there, but it doesn't look like a shed. It just looks like a pile of wood. But in order to make that those two by fours into a shed, you need the nails, you need the hammers, you need someone to actually put the nails into the wood, you need the plans, you need a tape measure. And that's what all of these other nutrients are for. So calcium are the two by fours, but you need magnesium to keep that calcium in solution. You need uh, vitamin D to actually assimilate that calcium into the bone and make sure you don't lose it in your urine. You need boron to convert um, 125 uh, vitamin D to 25 hydroxy vitamin D, which is five times more potent. So, um, we, 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 because the bones mostly made out of calcium, we tend to like focus on that, but it's really like a team that it takes to actually make that strong bone. And that's what's often missed by people. So I, I used to work at a health food store and one of the most common, um, customers that would come in is people who just came from the doctor and said they had low bone density and that they need a calcium supplement. And one of the things I would say is, well, have you had your vitamin D levels checked? And they would say, uh, what's that? (laughs) And guess what? If you have low vitamin D levels, you lose between 30 and 80% of any calcium you consume. So it just goes right through you. So there's a lot more to the story than just a single nutrient. All right. That's great. Good summary. Is there a product out there that encompasses all these components that people need to rebuild their bone health? I mean, it just might be a little bit too much for your average person to look up all these various supplements or minerals and consume them on a regular basis. So I'm wondering, again, as a chiropractor, is there a product I can recommend to patients to rebuild their bone health? And is it actually possible when their bone density has decreased to build that back up again, or can they only maintain where it's at? Well, I'll answer your second question first. Um, absolutely, it's possible to rebuild bone and reverse the, 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 the bone process. I've seen it um, with clients um, who've changed their diet, their lifestyle, and even I, I actually have a couple of client, clients that didn't change anything except start taking Uh, the right supplements, and not ideal, but they saw uh, an increase in their bone density. In terms of supplements, and just so your listeners know, I have no financial connection with these companies, 
but one of my favorite products is Ortho Bone and Bone Basics by AOR, um, which is a brand, I think they're in Canada and the U.S. It's a really great product because it has not just the calcium, but also the magnesium in the right ratio, the phosphorus, and some other trace minerals and vitamins that are necessary to, to keep that bone intact, like I mentioned. And of course, diet is super important. So a lot of those micronutrients through, you know, lots of vegetables in a plant-based diet. And um, there's even some herbs that are really good at building bone, like horsetail and nettle and oat straw make a really nice tea and are also a really great bone builder. Amazing. Are there any other food sources you would recommend in addition to leafy greens? Yeah. Um, Sesame seeds are really high in calcium, and they, you know, they're a good alternative. Almonds are also good. You could do almond milk for those who don't drink dairy. Yeah, but as long as you're eating a well-balanced diet, you're going to get a lot of those trace minerals and vitamins, and you, you don't really have to worry about getting that uh, those nutrients, you know, from to to reach specific levels. You know, one of the one of the ideas that kind of changed people's thoughts around calcium is I ask. You know, cows, after they're, you know, fed the, the breast milk of their mother, they're weaned off, and then they don't have milk anymore. So the question is, where do they get all their calcium from that ends up in the milk? Do you guys have any idea? It's, uh, <laughs> it's an interesting concept, and it's funny because I have a lot of my clientele and students who come to my classes, mainly being women, and they are, for the most part, on calcium supplements, and when I get into my own little conversation about not being on supplementation and being on those whole food sources that you just mentioned, it does become a big discussion. And then sometimes we get into, sometimes the question comes up as well, and I don't know how much you know on this is, um, in addition, is the calcium difference between cow dairy and sheep and goat dairy, because there has been a lot of research being done in how there is actually more calcium showing up in, in sheep and goat's milk dairy. Oh, that's interesting. It's in, uh, like, more of a concentration, the calcium? Yeah, and I was curious to see if you knew anything more, because I know a little bit about that, but um, I wanted to do a little bit of an analysis, because I know that cow dairy is obviously not something I recommend at all. But uh, sheep and goat dairy can definitely provide some benefit to the body and to the bone health, but I always choose plant-based sources, my number one go-to to recommend. Yeah, for sure. Some people can tolerate the goat and sheep a lot better. And for them, I say go for it. Um, If you look at a sheep and a goat, they're a lot closer in size to the human. So um, their milk builds sheep and goats, whereas cow's milk builds cows, which are 1,000-pound animals. And most people don't really want to be 1,000 pounds, but I think that's where we're going here in North America. So... There's actually also growth hormones we have to be aware of in, in milk, um, which can cause you to grow more, which can promote cancers. And I believe there's a lot less in, in the sheep and the goat milk. And we also have to understand that, yeah, we've consumed dairy in the past, but never the way we've been consuming it today. It's always been um, raw or in some sort of fermented form, which completely changes the way our body can process that food. So cow dairy, like it's being sold at Walmart or a convenience store, that, I'm assuming from what you've talked about so far, is not a good option when you're looking to rebuild your bone health. And could it possibly cause any detrimental effects to your bones? Absolutely. Well, cow dairy um, that's been pasteurized or cooked is extremely acidic. So what happens when we consume acidic food is it makes the blood more acidic. And the blood has to buffer that acid because it has to stay within a very, very tight pH of 7.35 to 7.45, whereas, like, our urine can fluctuate from, like, 5 to 8, you know, even within a day. Uh, We're not even talking about decimal places, but the blood is very tight. So if something comes into the bloodstream that acidifies it or makes it more acid, the blood needs to buffer that with minerals from somewhere. So what does it do? It pulls from one of our most abundant source, and that's the bones. So a a lot of people have not so much much issue with actually consuming enough calcium. It's more like losing too much calcium. And that would be an example where we would have to actually buffer that food because it's so depleted with our own body resources. 
Yeah, it makes sense. And one of the main supplements that I actually recommend to my clients too in terms of magnesium to help rebuild the bone or even just balancing out calcium levels is the Calm, the liquid magnesium. So that's that's definitely one thing that uh, I know Jesse and I use too. It's I find that it has actually made a profound difference for people's bone health. Oh, I love that. That's Yeah, that's a great product. Yeah. All right, Josh, let's uh, switch gears here a little bit and get into detoxification. How does that sound? That sounds great. All right. So in the beginning, can you break down what is detoxification and how that comes about in the human body? Sure. Um, Detoxification is the process of converting something that could be harmful to the human body into something that is no longer harmful. And... I would say before 100 years ago, um, there weren't a ton of things out there that can actually harm us, um, that we needed to detoxify. But it's this process that's always happening, um, whether we, we help it or not. And it's con- you know converting these possible um, things that could damage us into non-harmful things. And one of the ways it does this is through the liver. The liver which is our master detoxifier, um, filters the blood every three minutes, our whole bloodstream, and it kind of catches the impurities and will convert them um, through a phase one and a phase two detoxification pathway. And the, the way I like to describe this is like a recycling plant. So say you recycle your glass bottle, you send it to the recycling plant, um, and in the first phase, they break it down into a lot of little pieces, these shards. And um, after that, they'll in the second phase, they'll turn it into like a dust or whatever and then ship it out. So <laughs> the each one of those processes in that factory is important. It's the same in our body. We have to kind of catch the toxin. Then we have to detoxify it through the liver. And then... Most importantly, we actually have to clear it out of the body through our channels of elimination. Would you say that there's a difference in terms of the explanation of cleansing versus detoxification? I find I have a lot of people who approach me with that question, and they don't understand the difference. So I know you just very much spoke about detoxification. So how would you describe that versus cleansing, or are they one of the same? Um, Well, I guess detoxification is more of a technical term whereas cleansing is more of like an all-round kind of body thing. Is that what you would kind of extrapolate from that, Marnie? That's exactly what I say to people is that cleansing, yes, is kind of an overall um, protocol that you put yourself on. Like today, Jesse and I are actually juicing, so we're kind of cleansing our body, but what our body's doing is more of a detoxification process. And, of course, the longer we go, the more that the more effective that process will be. Oh, right. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So cleansing is more of like an active thing that you're, you know, doing for a day or two or three or maybe a week, while the detoxification is, like, happening all the time. It's what your body's doing anyway. Is that... That's exactly how I'd summarize it. Yeah, cleanse is when you're actually consciously making an effort to most likely speed up detoxification for a certain period of time. And like you explained before, the liver, the body is consistently detoxing every day, every minute, so... That, that's great. Yeah, I like that distinction a lot. I'm going to use that. <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of touched a little bit upon it, but why is it so important these days for people to be going through a protocol, whether it's through supp- supplementation in addition to diet, to actually detoxify their organs and their body? Well, I've got one number that people can remember, and that's 85,000. We've, we've introduced over the past 100 years, and I even saw in some other sources 50 years, um, over 85,000 chemicals. And the regulations around these chemicals are very, very, very loose. Over 90% of them have never been tested against human health. So we're exposed to them whether we like it or not. I mean, they're, they're everywhere. You know, they're in the air from environmental pollution and smog. Um, I bike to work every day, and I'm literally biking in the exhaust of cars. So there's cars, car fumes, you know, there's our, our carpets off gas, um, brominated fl- fire retardants, you know, our furniture off gases, um, cleaning products, what people put on their skin. I mean, it's everywhere. So to try to control it and help your body deal with it as efficiently as possible, we all have to do that. We all have to have some sort of daily detoxification plan because 
they're coming in, so they got to get out. Um, and I think I, I, I kind of forget what your question was. Yeah, I know just why it's so important, and that, that makes sense. We live in a very toxic world. Unless we're living on some farm in a sustainable, sust- sustainably made, you know, building mm-hmm. <laughs> of some sort, we, we are exposed to them, and especially living in, uh, in Toronto, in the city we live in, for sure. We're surrounded by it. But we do our best. So why don't we talk about maybe some of the best approaches to someone maybe just starting out? Um, maybe you want to talk about the person who's maybe already sick and needs a, maybe a, a bit of a more intense protocol versus the average person who just is living in this world. Totally. Maybe some easy approaches. Totally. Let's let's. I'll start with some simple things like some fundamentals, and then maybe I can uh, talk about a little bit more complicated stuff. But I mean, the first thing that everyone should consider for detoxification is just just before I get there, there was um. Uh, doctor, I'm just trying to remember his name, uh, Sid Baker, Dr. Sid Baker, a, a real heavy hitter in the functional medicine world. And he um, sort of came up with his term, get rid. And, you know, what do you need to get into the body and what do you need to rid of? So the first thing we all have to consider is not bringing more toxins into the body. So I encourage people and the listeners um, to just kind of Go around their home and look under their sink, look under their kitchen sink, look at their cosmetics. There's a great app that just came out um, that you can download for free. It's called Think Dirty. Have you guys tried this app? No, Josh, but you know we're uh, both all about our iPhones, <laughs> yeah. so I'm going to have it downloaded within a few minutes after we're done here. Yeah. It, Tell us about it's it. It's awesome. It's, um, you basically you download this app, and you can scan any barcode of any personal care product, and it'll give you a rating you know, from one to 10, kind of like the environmental working group, how they have that on their website, whether it's good or bad, and it'll tell you about every ingredient in there. Wow, that's amazing. And for the listeners, we're going to have that and everything else in the show notes at ultimatehealthpodcast.com. So you guys don't need to worry about writing all this down. We're going to have a nice little summary and links to everything we're talking about today. So awesome. So yeah, that'd be a good exercise for someone to do like, um, and, you know, sometimes, People can do a you know, cold turkey and just take all their toxins out of their environment, and sometimes you have to go slowly. But look under the sink, look in your bathroom, and, and look at what you store your food in in your kitchen, and just try to get out as many toxins as possible. And then uh, you know, some of the things that can help the body detox, the first and foremost and most important thing that I would say is, is water, a good quality water, because the best solution to pollution is dilution. You know, a toxin is only a toxin if you if it's in a certain concentration. So a perfect example is, is cigarettes. You know, like someone can smoke a couple cigarettes a day for, you know, 70 years, and maybe they start to get some lung cancer at that point or some issues. And the nicotine is actually toxic. So, But if we take those cigarettes and we concentrate the nicotine, uh, one drop of nicotine is lethal. It's a lethal dose. So... Same toxin, but it's just spread out over a much longer period of time. So water helps to dilute a lot of those toxins. And, of course, a lot of people know this from when they drink alcohol. (laughs) If they drink too much, the first thing they do is just drink a ton of water. And to take that one step further, you want to make sure your water is a good source of water because if your water isn't filtered in some way, you will be the filter. So... You know, spring water is probably some of the best water. And I know you guys did a little spring water harvesting recently. Yes, we did. It was our first time, and boy, do we have a blast. We're actually thinking about going and doing a harvest tomorrow. So that'll be our second time, and and it's just such a fun adventure to do as a couple or as a group. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. And there's a great website, uh, findaspring.com, where people can find springs like in their local area and go get their own water, which is pretty cool. So, so yeah, so spring water, you know, gets filtered through uh, quite a few layers of the ground in, in its natural process and then gets, you know, comes back up and is, is a pure form. Um, if you're living in a city, my recommendation is a reverse osmosis unit, um, which is sort of the gold standard because it just kind of takes everything out. And then if you can't afford that or you're in an apartment or something, then just get whatever filter you can get, like a Brita. They're not the best, but they'll at least take out some of the chlorine. And still, even if you have absolutely no access to any filter and you're in, 
a city, just take the water and let it sit out on the counter overnight, and a lot of that chlorine will actually evaporate. So water would be um, one of the most important things. Making sure you're having at least one to three bowel movements every single day because that's one of our most important channels of elimination. Um, sweating is really good because our skin is another channel of, of elimination. We get rid of about two pounds of toxins per day through our skin. So sweating through exercise, sweating through saunas, whether it's a hot sauna or a steam or a infrared, um, maybe taking a trip to a hot place, which I'm sure no one would argue with. And, um, yeah, so those would be a few really great things to get started with. And, of course, your food. So you want to make sure you're eating the cleanest food possible, organic wherever possible. And if you need priorities in terms of the organic realm and the food, animal products would be the best place to start for organic if you eat animal products. So making sure that um, if you're getting meat, that it's from a grass-fed source because animals – um, bioaccumulate toxins. In other words, to get the size that they are, they have to eat a lot of a vegetable. Whereas if you ate the actual vegetable, you're just getting a small amount of that toxin. So those would be a few good places to start. Right. And with the meats, it's also important to look at the source of food for the animals because that's going to change their whole nutrition profile, especially with the omega-3s, omega-6s. Oh, totally. Like a conventional piece of meat versus a Grass-fed piece of, like beef, for example, are two completely different foods under the microscope. And if we looked at the nutrient profile, um, you know, that conventional cow that's not getting outside and getting sun and locked up indoors and just getting fed grains with high omega-6 inflammatory fats versus a happy cow that's out in pasture getting sun and eating mostly grass, breaking that down properly in its stomach, and lots of great omega-3s and anti-inflammatory fat in there. And I even just listened to um, another podcast recently by Mike Mutzel, um, who, and he's, he's a, a really great functional medicine guy. And he was talking about endotoxins, so toxins in the gut, which a lot of people don't consider. And um, a cow that is stuck inside eating the diet that's not right for it is going to have a completely different bacteria balance in its gut, a completely different microbiome. And those bacteria create endotoxins, which are exactly what they sound like. They're literally toxins, which can then be absorbed into the bloodstream and end up in the meat of that animal. Whereas that cow that's outside eating the diet it's supposed to supports a healthy microbiome in its gut, and those the endotoxins are much less the cow doesn't have a leaky gut, and those don't end up in the meat as much. That's great. And I think there's a really important underlying bigger picture here that quality is of the utmost importance. A food could be, if you look at it on a continuum, certain foods such as meat or eggs or even vegetables, when you look at the GMOs and conventional pesticides being added to those, A food can go from being extremely healthy for the body to extremely detrimental. So it's not just about what you're consuming, it's about the quality. Absolutely. It's it's interesting how, like, it's a difference between a food that heals and a food that harms. And it could even be the same food as we're talking about. Yeah, so that, yeah, that's a great point you, you uh, outlined. For sure, and we know that food is so important, especially in a detox process. Are there any supplements that you would recommend in specific for detoxification? Yeah, there's lots of, lots of great stuff. If you want to clean out a liver, um, for example, there's a, um, a couple great ones called dandelion root and artichoke, globe artichoke, which are... It's kind of like, you know, the old printers where you got like a a piece of paper stuck in it and you press the purge button and it just spits out the paper. (laughs) That's that's what uh, like globe artichoke and dandelion root do. They're called uh, choleretics and they help um, your bile move through. They help the detoxification in the liver move faster. So those are two great herbs to kind of clean clean the filter out. And uh, milk thistle, of course, most people know about that one, which is a really potent antioxidant and liver protector and helps with the rebuilding of the liver cells, which, by the way, have an extraordinary ability to heal. If you get a liver transplant, the person who 
is the donor, their liver grows back within about four to six weeks. So how cool is that? Yeah, so those are some, some great options. Um, burdock root is another fantastic herb, which is also known as a blood cleanser. And it's in the, the famous Essiac formula, which was which used a, a while ago to help people cure cancer. What else? You know, the greens are really good, like the spirulinas and the chlorellas are great for cleansing the body and chelating heavy metals. So anything that's green, you're really going to get a good, powerful detoxification punch from that. And even some uh, really good therapeutic foods for detoxification are, you can eat artichokes, so that's a great option. Raspberries are fantastic for detoxifying estrogen. They have something in them called elagic acid, which is also in red, red cherries, and that helps a, a process called glucuronidation speed up. So, yeah, there's lots of great tools, and, and sort of a general rule, if, if someone's listening to this and this is totally overwhelming, is just go for the colors. Like, each color in, uh, of the rainbow in our food um, world offers a slightly different cocktail of detoxifying nutrients. Thank you. That's really helpful for people. And I love that all the supplements that you did recommend are all mainly from a food source, like the greens and the artichoke root and all that. So that's, you know, my philosophy as well, too. So thank you for those suggestions. Yeah. I think it's a good time to maybe get into your other big area of expertise, which is digestive health. So I would love to ask you some questions because this is a really big area because a lot of people suffer every day with discomfort upset stomach bloating gas and they accept that as the norm and I would well you would probably know more of a percentage of how many people are walking through life every day with either some kind of severe digestive problem or just not eating you know the right diet for sure and causing causing pain but let's talk about maybe some other top reasons why people have poor gut health yeah totally and yeah I love to talk about this I just actually finished a course on digestion Um, because I feel it's probably one of the most important areas to to focus on. It's it's truly where everything begins and everything ends. So I often do describe the body and different body parts as factories, and our digestive tract is the factory that converts something that's bigger and breaks it down into smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller units so we can eventually absorb it across the the gut membrane, the small intestinal membrane, into the bloodstream and turn it into us. So you literally are what you eat. And and the digestive tract is the interface that, you know, supports that that kind of that term. So our digestion, we we have to be really nice to it because that that factory really can be in the difference between health, ill health and, and good health. So we're, we're basically, it, it, it's the place where we're exposed to the largest, or our body is exposed to the largest environmental um, possible insults per day. We, our, our digestive tract, if we laid it out, it would be about the size of a tennis court. And every time we eat a meal, that whole meal is coming across that tennis court, and our body has to basically figure out if it's friend or foe. And break it down into smaller pieces so we can absorb it and turn it into ourselves. So there's a lot of parts to the digestive tract. I would say one of the most important things for digestion that I think most people can take something away from from this talk without getting in too much detail is before we even start eating. So this is called the cephalic phase of digestion, and this is when we use our senses. We think about the food. We talk about the food. We we see it, we feel it, we smell it, and this actually starts to stimulate our digestion and could account for up to 20% of our digestive juices. So it's very important to experience food that way and to sit down and take a moment to eat and have a nice conversation and not be stressed, and that can actually hugely influence digestion over the long term and the short term. As long as people are thinking about kale and not donuts. Exactly. <laughs> or or happy thoughts. Of while course. While they eat their yeah. donut. <laughs> no, it's really important to make people more mindful about their meals because so many people just blindly go and eat and then they complain that they're in pain and don't even make the connection that what they're eating is what's, for the most part, causing probably at least 80% or more of their pain. Oh, totally. It's like, you know, when you go 
camping. I don't know if you've ever been camping. I'm sure you've, you know, had to do that at one point where you have to make your own meal. You have to bring it. And it's like this whole long process. You get the fire ready. You chop up vegetables. Like, everyone's involved in the process. And food just, like, tastes better when you do it like that. And that's traditionally how we did it. And maybe even to add more, like, we had to, like, hunt for it and everything, all just to get some sustenance. And now we've totally, like cut that out of our activities you know you can literally drive up to a window and get a paper bag full of food which is is very unusual evolutionarily speaking so josh say somebody's having i know there's a lot of different specific issues people can have and it's not really a general topic like gut health issues but uh, are there any supplements you can recommend that people could try if they're having disturbances in that area Yeah, definitely. There's some really great stuff that can help to stimulate digestion. One of them is called bitters. So bitters are are tinctures made from herbs that taste bitter. And um, when we taste something bitter, our body thinks it's a poison. And that's sort of how we've protected ourselves over, you know, 2.6 million years. (laughs) You know, we we try something, maybe a little berry, and it tastes a little bit too bitter, and and we decide not to eat it because it could kill us. So there's certain foods and herbs that have work by a similar principle where they're bitter, but they're actually beneficial for us. And that bitter taste ramps up digestion because if it was a poison, we'd have to deal with that as quick as possible through our digestive tract to make sure it doesn't kill us. So there's a whole bunch of herbs that uh, have this bitter principle, and they're fantastic at stimulating digestion. Um, probably one of the most bitter herbs is gentian. Um, have you guys ever tried gentian? No, that's a totally new one to me. Yeah. I'm anxious to hear more about yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, the first time I tried it, it was, like, overwhelming. Like, it nearly knocked me off my feet. Uh, it's so bitter. But um, it, it really stimulates digestion, um, stimulates hydrochloric acid production, stimulates bio-release. Bio and what's interesting also that I learned recently is that you actually have bitter receptors in your intestines. So when you taste that bitter herb like gentian or even bitter greens like arugula, it stimulates not only your, your salivary glands go, but there's receptors in your, in your small intestine that start to kind of expect that food is coming along and they prep and get ready. So gentian would be uh, one of them. Another one which I, I am using tons of with my clients is hydrochloric acid, um, also known as betaine hydrochloride. Because people's stomachs have kind of, like, checked out, you know? Like, we've abused them so much that they're not making enough stomach acid anymore. And stomach acid is the beginning of the whole digestive cascade. So betaine hydrochloride is wonderful at helping to improve the stomach acid production and help to support that stomach while you change some of your lifestyle habits and sort of work as a crutch to help you absorb your food better while you're, you're building your strength. And then... The, I guess two more that are really super great for digestion. One is enzymes, digestive enzymes. So that just helps us to break down our food. And the final one would be like a probiotic, which, uh, you know, we're more bacteria than human. We're about outnumbered about 10 to 1. There's 100 trillion bacteria in and on us and about 10 trillion human cells. So that microbiome has a huge influence on our health and, and, and probiotics often are really beneficial and supportive of the digestive process. Now, are these supplements that you would actually recommend to someone who just said to you, okay, Josh, I've got IBS, because IBS, I find, I come across people all the time who don't even know why they call them, you know, claim that title for their own gut issue. But uh, would you say that these were things that would be on a protocol for someone who, I know you'd probably want to look further, but what would you say to that? Um, I would say yes for some people, and it wouldn't hurt to try. But, um, and yeah, I know IBS is kind of like, it's another... Catch-all. Yeah, yeah, like the doctor has no idea what's going on, so they say, oh, you have IBS. Um, Yeah, so it it would be good for some people. Like, for example, some people with IBS do extraordinary on a probiotic. Some don't do so well. And others actually have to try different probiotics before they find one that works well for them. So that would be an example of, you know, having to have different even just probiotics for different people. Uh, bitters, 
those can actually pretty much benefit anyone because what they're just doing is stimulating digestion. They're not really going to cause any more damage or alter the gut in, in, a, in a drastic way. Great. Thank you for that. Let's shift gears again and get into something that's going to be a little bit of fun here, the rapid fire round. So we're going to throw some uh, questions at you and you can just give us shorter answers to give us a better idea of who you are and, and your beliefs in the health realm. And you have to say things that just come to your mind. Okay. Without thinking. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. So first one, what is your favorite snack on the go? Favorite snack on the go? Well, my fav- I, I would have to say dried mango as a treat as well. What about, what is your specialty in the kitchen? Elixirs, putting various ingredients together to make them taste good that have a great medicinal value. All right. And your favorite vacation spot? So anywhere with mountains, I'm, I'm good with. I'm a diehard skier, so you put me in front of mountains, put a little snow there, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a happy camper. Sounds good. Snowboarding too or skiing? Skiing. Awesome. All right. Are you a cacao guy or a, van- a vanilla bean guy? <laughs> um, I like them both together, but if I had to choose, I'd say ca- cacao for sure. I like that answer. They definitely do go very well together. So, And last one, if you were stuck on a tropical island, you could only have one food, what would it be? You know, I ask my clients that all the time, and now I've never been asked the question, and... I'm not sure. I mean, maybe a coconut because, you know, I'm a practical guy. My my wife always makes fun of me because I always think things through way more than her. But, you know, a coconut, you can get the meat, you can, you know, which has good fats in it. You can get the liquid inside, which will give you hydration. And most importantly, if you're a woman, you can actually use the coconut shell as a bikini. So, Nice. So, I like yeah, that. That's a little <laughs> twist at the end. I've never heard that part. <laughs> good. It's so funny because I'm a really practical guy too, and, and that's basically word for word my answer. So <laughs> I love coconuts, and I love all parts of the coconut. So it's just a wonderful food for me, for practicality, and for taste. I absolutely love coconuts. Well, if we ever get stuck on a desert island together, um, I'm sure we'll get along pretty well then. All right, and I'll wear the bikini. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's All it. right, well, I'm going to change the subject now. Um, <laughs> you mentioned your favorite thing to make is elixirs, and Josh, I know you have a couple of products. Why don't you tell us about your some of your blends? Yeah, I have um, – well, I was doing these elixir, elixir workshops for a while where I would, like, teach people how to put all these ingredients together. Um, to get basically, you know, different effects like energy and bone building. And people kept on saying, well, can you kind of, like, can you put some stuff together so we don't have to think about it as much? So I created an Elixir blend. Um, the product's literally called Elixir. And it just has a whole bunch of really powerful herbs in it. Um, it's a chocolate base, and it has, like, goji in it, and then a whole bunch of adaptogens like maca, cordyceps, two types of ginseng, and it's got lacuma and um, mesquite, you know, for a little extra flavor. And it's just, it's really delicious. It's, people really love it in the morning or as a coffee replacement. And I even had a, a friend of mine, as a chef, make a, like a fondue out of it. Mm. Yeah. I put it into chocolate smoothies and it's delicious. Yeah. It's good. And then you also have some capsules as well, too. I just have – I don't have capsules of, of anything okay. like that. I just um, – I have some supplements I use in the clinic, but they're only – That's what I meant. Sorry. You're – yeah, the, some of the supplements. So you have a – what's – you have something in a bottle. Oh, yes. I have a bitters. Okay. Yeah, it's your yeah, bitters. that I make. Yeah, that would be available on my site as well. Amazing. And I want to know more about some of your programs. Why don't you share with our listeners about some of your online programs? Sure. Yeah. Um, Basically, I teach three main courses. One is on supplements and therapeutic nutrition and basically how to use all of these tools to help heal yourself and if you're working with people to help heal your clients. So it's for practitioners. It's also for anyone just interested in learning learning all the details. I have another course which just teaches uh, practitioners how to put protocols together. So that's a little bit more specialized for those working with clients. And then I just, uh, for the first time, taught a course called Advanced Clinical Focus, uh, Digestion and GI Health. 
So that was um, for anyone as well, you know, practitioners or just people looking to find out more on digestion. Um, it's a four-week course. So we, we talked about the anatomy, the digestive process, some of the common ailments, how to heal them, therapeutic foods. And we just kind of went into that in, in great detail. Excellent. So you guys make sure and go over to Josh Gitalis, G-I-T-A-L-I-S dot com and check out his products, courses, and he has an amazing health blog there too. So go check out what he has to share. And Josh, let's uh, start to wind things down here a little bit. I have a question. You can take it how you want. What I'd like to know is, can you leave us with a takeaway Something that we can all take away from this and implement right away to help us bring ourselves towards reaching ultimate health? Uh, wow, great question. So I would say the biggest thing when it comes to health, and I'm sure anyone listening to this is going to be on the same page, is that ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is actually dangerous. So take, you know, after this, this podcast, Um, you've now educated yourself and um, equipped yourself with some wonderful tools. In my office, on my wall, I have a a phrase, the best way to get started is to get started. And just don't think about it. Just choose one to like three or four things that you heard today and just do them starting today or tomorrow. And if you continue doing stuff when it comes to health, it's like compounding interest. It just like builds and builds and builds and builds and builds until you're – well, I haven't got there yet, but till you're 120 and a strong in mind and body, <laughs> we'll see what happens then. <laughs> I like that. And I like the point that this is a journey and it's not about taking everything on all at once. Slow but sure, have a big goal in mind and just keep adding things in to get to your ultimate health goal. Absolutely. Love it. Thank you. Thank you so much for all of your knowledge and all of your tips and and the resources that you shared with us. Yeah, Josh, this has been a a ton of fun and and you shared so much good information from bone health to detoxification and digestive health and a whole bunch in between. It's it's been a blast and I think that everybody's going to get a whole lot from this information. My pleasure. Thanks for having me and I'd love to do it again sometime. All right. We'll definitely have to do that because we have a lot more we could ask you, so we'll uh, we'll get back to you on that. <laughs> yeah, perfect, that's great. So everybody, make sure you head over and check out Josh's website, joshgatalis.com. What we would like you to do for our show is head over to iTunes, subscribe, and write us a review. If you want to take a minute and do that, that would really help us out and give us a rating because that's just going to help bring more exposure to our show and get this message out to the masses. So. Thank you, everybody, for listening in, and we will talk to you guys soon. Take care and have a great day.